Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where I do basically everything there is to do. Uh, in this video, I want to share with you my experience in upgrading the uh, head unit in my 2014 uh, Beetle Convertible R-Line. Uh, this one has uh, Fender Audio, so it's a little bit uh, particular uh, as opposed to the uh, uh, hundreds of other videos that are out there uh, regarding upgrading the head units. Uh, there are also a lot of videos in doing, that do this on uh, GTIs and Jettas and Golfs and things like that, uh, but very, very little, if any, on Beatles. So this is not really a how-to start to finish. This is more of a um, what is possible to do uh, with these Beatles. Um, so this one had the RCD 510, uh, again, Fender Audio. Uh, premium sound 8 I think it's called as well and um, uh, but again it but I did not have a backup camera and of course it did not have uh, Apple CarPlay which is really what I was after um, so the other things that you can do here is upgrade it to an, um, an RNS 510 which costs over $500 actually more like 600 to 800 dollars depending on which version you get and uh, yes, then you can get the uh, backup camera, um, but uh, that's also another $500 or something like that. So you're out 1200 bucks basically is what I, uh, uh, what I figured. But also it does not give you Apple CarPlay, which is uh, the thing to have here. It gives you GPS navigation, navigation uh, but again, uh, that's, that doesn't make up for Apple CarPlay. So, um, what I did basically, I very recently discovered that you can get these uh, uh, RCD 330 uh, uh, head units, here it is, from China. And these, as you probably already know, are OEM, actual VW OEM radios that are made for the uh, Chinese market. So these are only installed in Chinese uh, VW uh, Golf Jetta, Beatles and whatnot. Um, so they're sold on eBay, uh, perhaps on Amazon as well. Make sure that you get the right version. Uh, this is the no name is what it's called, uh, which is the, um, there is a little bit of history behind these things. There were two manufacturers that made these. And um, uh, because the name of one of them was not known at the beginning, it, it became uh, known as the no name brand. Uh, and which is the better of the two. The other one had some cold solder issues that made the, the radio misbehave uh, during cold weather climates. Um, so anyways, this is the Eunice. It's an RCD uh, 330. Uh, so it is, it is OEM. It's not as uh, good quality in terms of uh, sound uh, in performance and features as the uh, RCD 510 or the RNS 510, you know, the, the head units that are made for the North America market. Uh, I am in the U.S., by the way, um, but um, uh, it, it serves the purpose. The drawback, and I haven't played with it yet. Um, I just kind of want to show you before I put it all in uh, permanently what uh, some of the caveats in doing the installation. Uh, but one of the major drawback is the FM reception is not very good. Uh, I'm only getting three stations actually right now. Um, but I have I haven't taken the car out of the garage, so I'm hoping that's a factor. So I'll address that later. Again, it does address the primary thing uh, concern or, or uh, goal that I had of backup camera and uh, Apple CarPlay. So those two things definitely work. Uh, there is actually one more thing I need to resolve, which is the uh, dynamic lines. Uh, the lines in the cam are supposed to be dynamic. Um, but uh, they're not right now. I have to figure out. Like I said, I haven't uh, permanently put it in yet, so I'm going to figure that out later. Uh, what I did do is I basically tested it all out before I ran all the wiring, which, of course, as you can imagine, is the major pain. Uh, so I had it all wired up and uh, tested it, and like I said, that those aspects seem to be working, but there are some drawbacks. So before I show you what's going on here, let me uh, go to the wiring diagram and uh show you a little bit about this because uh this uh got me stumped at the beginning until i figured out what all of this is so these are this is a picture off of their website this is uh, rcd330.com i am not endorsing them they have been very very good with support i had a couple of questions they answered them even over the weekend uh, when they were supposed to be sleeping during my day um so but i pay for all this so don't be confused about that 
uh, but it seems to be the most uh, um, reliable place to get them. Uh, it took about, I don't know, three weeks to get them from China. So, you know, shipping times right now are, are, are what they are. But again, just to kind of go through the wiring, uh, I did get the um, a camera. You have to specify whether it's for the Beetle or not. So I, I sent them an email ahead of time, letting them know that it was for the Beetle. Uh, otherwise, the camera will point up in the sky, and that's because uh, the lid of the uh, the trunk lid of the Beetle is slanted versus the ones in the Golfs and so on uh, is straight up, right? So this is the hardness that comes with it. Uh, there is going to be a video connection that plugs in to this uh, long harness that goes into the dash. And then there is this connector, and I'll show you that in the dash. That connector goes into this, uh, you have to remove the blue uh, connector block um, uh, from, the, from the large uh, square connector. Uh, there's a little clip that you lift and this comes out. And insert this one in there. And then from here, there are two wires, a red and a black that go to accessory. Here's where the confusing part came in. It goes to the switched 12 volt power. So you have to find a fuse that has a switch 12 volts that only comes on when the car is on or an accessory position. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's uh, this wire right here that has a, a, it does come with a fuse pigtail so you can plug it right into a fuse. Uh, there's a ground wire. Uh, this plugs in into this connector right there. And let's see. Oh, and then there is um, a little um, uh, connector block that has to be spliced onto your CAN bus plus and minus uh, uh, cables. And I'll show you that in a second. Finally, uh, from again, back from the camera, uh, this cable right here plugs into the um, uh, harness, existing harness of the uh, trunk release. And then this is the other power cable. This has to go to constant 12 volts, which I wasn't doing at the beginning because it just says 12 volts. Uh, so that's the other gotcha. This has to go to a point that always have 12 volts. Otherwise, guess what? You cannot open your trunk. So be careful there. I did that. Uh, and then of course that goes to solid ground. Also, this cable has a blue wire, which is the wire that you have to connect your reverse uh, lamp, uh, light bulb. So you have to find the, um, I think it's a brown wire on, the, there are three leads that goes into the connector of the uh, backup uh, of, the, uh, of the headlamp in the back. Um, and one of them is the backup light bulb. So it's easy to test. You basically, you don't even have to start the car. You uh, put the car into accessory, you put it in reverse, the backup light turns on, and then you can, uh, uh, with your voltmeter, you can test out which pin has 12 volts. So that goes there. Uh, so as far as the connector block, here is the little splicer that comes uh, in the kit. And you have to, so can uh, plus, I believe, uh, is, yeah, so I've got a diagram here. Uh, CAN plus is on the top and CAN minus is on the bottom. So these wires are already inserted into this block. Just make sure that they're correct. This is the plus and this is the minus. And then they're carried in. And my, the color of my wires and my connector were orange and lighter orange, I believe. So as opposed to white and blue here. Uh, but, um, uh, but they do go in this order because again, this is the CAN plus and that's the CAN minus. So you have to make sure that you plug it into the solder. So you basically put it there, clamp it on, make sure the wires are in the right channels, and then you squeeze it together with pliers uh, from this end. They do, these guys have a bunch of videos on YouTube as well that are, are mute videos, but uh, no audio, but uh, they do show you a couple of things. As far as running the wires, this is how you're basically supposed to be running it. Uh, basically, you go into the trunk lid, uh, take that apart, run the wires, and you, you're supposed to run them on the side here underneath your uh, thresholds uh, all the way to the front. I did not do that and I'll explain why. Okay, so just to, again, not a how-to, so I'm not gonna go through how I took this apart, but I guess I can kind of uh, briefly describe it. Basically, is to, to remove this cover here that's over here, you basically pick um, a corner with one of these uh, plastic tools. I bought this kit, by the way, um, from Amazon. And I use only a few tools, but it turned out to be pretty handy. So one of these plastic tools, uh, wherever you can find that entry point, you put it in and then you start prying. And as you can see, there are these uh, slots right here. That's where the clips are. Uh, the car is somewhere else right now, can't show you. But basically all these clips, that's where all the, um, the metal clips are. 
and you just kind of go around pop it open and eventually the whole thing falls off there is one screw that is through the uh there is a, a deep handle in the cover so there is one screw that goes through you got to make sure obviously you take that out first <coughs> also by the way make sure that your release uh trunk release emergency release is uh connected properly uh i never even knew i had this thing uh but obviously uh i, I unplugged one of the wires here uh that connector right there that goes to, into this harness so that I had more slack when I fed the wires in here and so this morning I couldn't open the trunk so I went and I found the let me just show you quickly the emergency truck release which is right here you lift this up and there is a rope and you use the yank on the rope the problem is is that it didn't open and that's because this red connector here uh, so there is a, a steel cable that goes in here and there's a ball right there that connects to this other piece so this thing just basically popped open uh, like I said I never even knew I had this so obviously I never used it but uh, anyways um, I was able to finally open the trunk uh, luckily my, my back seats were open so I literally crawled in and um, just make sure that you put this in correctly I ended up putting this tie wrap over here so that this thing wouldn't open anymore anyways uh, so here's the wiring here's the video cable that you have to feed all the way to the front from the front to the back and then these this is the other cable that has the blue wire and it has the plus and minus that have to go to a, a, a permanent 12 volts and ground uh, again that goes to the video ignore this red wire this is uh, another light that I that I put on my little uh, cover over here so that when the trunk is open like this I have light that shines down uh, and basically I just connected it in parallel to the trunk light that's over there that you can see flickering right now I also upgraded that to really good. anyways uh, so the wire goes here it goes over there it goes inside this grommet it comes over here I have to close this up again inside that grommet that's the hardest part and then it goes inside the vehicle uh, so I routed it on the trunk down there and there is a nice hole way back in there that allows you to feed the wires right under here okay right under the seat belt so the wires come out over here they go there and again not the optimal place because uh, the seat once the seat goes here it could crunch the wires however um, I don't think this is gonna happen because there's another wire here so I make sure that these run right next to them besides I never carry anybody in the back seat so it's not gonna be a problem uh, and then obviously there's not going to be any pressure in the middle here because nobody there's no room to sit here uh, so the wires go over there they go under the carpet and then they go under the console over here they run all on along the side over there because there are screws that they will go down so you have to make sure the wires don't get pinched they go all along the line they go inside the dash and they come up all right so inside here uh, you get those um, um uh, the permanent 12 volts that one changes direction and it goes down over here it goes underneath the steering wheel and it goes into the fuse box okay so those are the uh, pigtails that plug into the fuse so this is my um let's see that is the switched um 12 volts so that only comes on when the car is on or in accessories and then that one there is it was a 15 amp fuse so the 15 amp fuse goes on the pigtail and then the pigtail plugs into the in place of the 15 amp fuse so that one is always on so that's my permanent 12 volts okay <clears throat> back to here okay so connector block so this is the original connector that was in this uh, square connector block there is a little clip right there in the center that you basically lift up with a very tiny screwdriver lift up and then you kind of push on the connector and the whole thing falls off this is the original this is the connector that comes with the head unit so this allows you to again put that in there and use a regular rca type backup camera because i went with the uh, emblem backup camera uh, then the then the camera itself comes with the, the wire that comes from the video cable that comes from the back and it comes with its own little uh, blue connector that, that plugs in there <clears throat> this is the um, the other one that just plugs in and then these are the CAN bus wires plus and minus that plugged in there directly okay so that's what those look like uh, what else this is the uh, original antenna which is part of the problem 
so as you know, this car, these cars have two antennas. Um, uh, this one only uses a single antenna, so it came with a um, with a with a cable that allows you to bring to just tap into one of the two antennas. Do not use both. That is a misnomer. That uh, using both shorted together it gives you better reception. They have also a good uh, a good uh, writing about that, write up about that. So you have to pick one of the two, whichever is the best one. This did come with a connector, which I removed because uh, the connector doesn't fit. So uh, the the the, um, the plug is correct; it will plug in there. But the connector housing that came with this uh, was wrong, so it doesn't hold in there. So I took it out, and it, this does plug in. I just have to figure out a way to hold it properly. And again, you just pick one of those two uh, channels, uh, one of those two antennas, and then you get some radius. Like I said, right now I'm only getting three stations. Hopefully, uh, <clears throat> that will improve when I take the car out of the garage. Um, <clears throat> my head unit came upgraded with um, this uh, plug in the back. Okay, so it has this green plug in the back. This is an upgrade that they do before they ship this out to you. That's the antenna. And um, <clears throat> basically that allows you to bring that connector uh, to the front through a USB, which I don't have right now. Can't find it right now, but that brings it to a, an external USB plus auxiliary uh, jack. Let me grab it and I'll show you. Okay, so the um, the cable that comes on the back of the radio plugs into this little connector that gives you a USB to plug your uh, iPhone um, uh, jack into it and then auxiliary. Now, the curious thing is that I thought that this one cable would give me both USB and auxiliary. In fact, the head unit does have an auxiliary and aux connector in the front. But it doesn't. Uh, so this car already had one, which was actually in that hole. And so the connector, I believe is this one here. Uh, this one here, the connector does fit behind here. So somehow I am hoping that the car just figures that out. So I'll be testing that. And uh, I do want that. My wife likes to use a good old fashioned iPod. Um, which does not communicate sound through the um, a USB cable. So I hope I can get that working. Anyways, once I put it all in, I'll be able to test it. So the reason why I have this so ripped out is because um, this stuff does get in the way. Uh, I originally had a uh, switched 12 volt wire running into the cigarette lighter. As you can see, there is that tape there. There's the red wire, so I was using that. Uh, plus, I wanted to take this out so that I could figure out how to mount that connector in there, uh, which is bigger than the original one. Um, so I took this out and make sure that uh, you unplug your battery when you do all this, but when you do the testing, obviously you got to plug the battery back in. So make sure that the airbag light stays plugged in. If it doesn't, then you're going to get a, a, an, an airbag a warning light, which is no big deal. You can always reset it if you have a, a, an ODB uh, connector. Uh, which I do, I just don't want to go through the trouble, um, so I kept this plugged in. By the way, here's my uh, garage opener button right there, okay? Uh, this is a mod uh, that I made a bunch of years ago. You know, I have a video about it on my channel. This is a convertible, so obviously you don't want to have your garage door opener showing. Uh, so as you can see, it looks exactly stock. And that wire that you see back here goes to my remote control, which is here. Okay, and this one tucks right inside this uh, cover right there uh, on the inside and that metal part is the only thing that you see here but if nobody knows, nobody knows, right? So anyways, you can see that video on my channel as well. It's been working fine for a number of years. Uh, so that's why this is all ripped open. You probably don't need to do that uh, except that again to run those wires. It's nice to be able to lift this up a little bit, right? And um, so um, this is uh, fairly easy actually to take apart. Uh, okay, so let me plug this in and I will show you how it works. Okay, so the uh, head unit is in. Antenna is connected to one of the two channels, the one that gives me a whole three radio stations. Uh, the uh, USB is uh, cable is connected. I don't have it plugged in yet. 
and of course the quad lock is uh, securely connected to the radio so if I turn on my accessory switch there the radio comes alive uh, it normally comes up just in the clock mode right there so that's standard and uh, turn that on and radio comes on and sound wise I think it's comparable to the way it used to be. They do say that this is not the, as good a sound as the uh, original RCD 510, um, but this does go through the uh, Fender amp. Uh, they did have, I did have them coded for me, by the way. You have to code it specifically for the Fender amp, so make sure you uh, arrange that. Um, and I guess if it's not coded properly, uh, it puts out all the power that it can, so the sound comes out distorted, as opposed to when it goes through an amp, you just want it uh, basically this act as a preamp. Um, so it seems to be working fine because, again, the sound is, uh, it's got nice, you know, decent bass and uh, it's not thinny or anything like that. So, sound aside, the big test is the, is the uh, backup camera. Um, okay, so uh, if I put this in reverse, Okay, the backup camera does pop up, all right, which works great, but there is no video, all right? Well, this took me a while to figure out, but you have to make sure that the trunk is closed and then the video pops up, okay? So look at that. Now, again, uh, let me shut this door. Problem is uh, no dynamic lines, okay? And I did also try this uh, with the car on, so the, the lines don't move. Uh, I seem to remember they're supposed to, so I have to talk to them again and figure out what's going on. Also, you notice that I get the, um, uh, the steering wheel warning light there, so I don't know. Uh, I did unplug the battery, obviously, when I did this, so maybe that's part of the problem. I, I have to figure that out. Uh, anyways, just make sure that you close that damn trunk when you test this because otherwise it doesn't work. You get a black screen. Uh, so I'm going to continue to uh, uh, tidy all this up uh, and uh, I'll be back with uh, more final results and, and better testing. Okay, so final update. Um, everything is back together almost and I'll explain why that is. But let me just show you the trunk. Everything works. The handle, by the way, it's maybe a little flimsier than the original one. Um, so, but it does work. Um, everything is clean, tucked away. All right. <clears throat> Again, make sure you close the trunk, otherwise the camera doesn't work. Uh, and then as far as inside the car, all the wires are run underneath here, nice and tight. This is almost back together and that is all in. Um, the only two issues I have left, which hopefully I will, I hope to resolve over the next coming days, is the um, connector uh, for the antenna that they provided, the adapter, uh, to go from two antennas to one. Uh, I think I, I might have explained this earlier, is not the right connector. Uh, so I took the actual jack out, out of the white connector that it came in and plugged it directly into my wiring in the back. Um, and I'm holding it together with tape, so it works, but I'm hoping to find an actual connector that, uh, that, that is stock. Uh, second issue is the fact, and that's why I don't have this together yet, is the fact that I opted for the option B, which gives you the uh, USB and auxiliary uh, jack over there. And my hope, my impression, I didn't even think about to ask the question, was that both the USB and the auxiliary would come out of there. This car did have originally an auxiliary uh, jack, so I figured might as well have it again. And, um, but the cable that comes out of the back of the unit only plugs into the USB. So the question is, how do I get auxiliary into that connector over there? Uh, it's kind of silly, they have the option and then there is no way to connect that. So I asked the question, and like I said, hopefully, I hope to resolve this over the next coming days. Otherwise, everything works. Uh, as far as the video, by the way, I took the car out of the garage and it worked flawlessly. So I picked up a lot of radio stations. And by the way, the sound is actually really good. Maybe even better than the original RCD 510. Um, like I said, I had them uh, uh, code this for the uh, Fender audio. So I do have that in the trunk. You see my speakers over there. And uh, I mean, anyways, the sound is great. The uh, FM is great. AM, again, non-existent. I expected that, so um, no AM. 
and the U, um, the SD card works. The auxiliary here works. This one only gives you charging uh, capabilities. Uh, so that still works, but only to charge if you have this plugged in. E even if this cable is not plugged in, this one here is disabled. Uh, like I said, it only gives you 5 volts, but this one gives you 5 volts plus the um, uh, Apple Car Radio, which is what I have. I haven't tested with Android Auto because I don't have that. So remember, this is not a how-to video, more of a here are the catches and uh, um, how you resolve them. So the big catch was that when I turned the car on for the first time, I was getting a steering wheel, a light on the dash, orange light, and the uh, um, ABS was light was on and the TPS light was on. Uh, I have a uh, Carista scanner, so I scanned the car and it found some codes in the uh, steering angle sensor, ECU, and so on, and tried to clear them and it, would not, it was not able to clear it. Uh, I did some quick search on the internet and found that there is a trick to it. So what you have to do is start the car, turn the steering wheel lock to lock, and the steering wheel angle light goes off right away, uh, as well as the ABS light goes off. The only one that stays on is a TPS light, which you can't even reset with the um, uh, TPS reset button in the glove box. You have to actually drive the car for five minutes. Drive the car and that goes away as well. So now all my, and, and by the way, that uh, comes up because of the uh, battery that was disconnected. So it looks like uh, every time you disconnect the battery, that's a common problem. So it's not related to this, to this radio, it's related to disconnecting the battery. But everything is reset now, everything works, sounds great, FM is great, uh, Apple Car Radio is great, SD card is great. Uh, the only thing is this stupid connector here that would obviously make it look like a nice clean installation. Uh, and obviously I could put this one in, uh, the problem is that uh, besides the fact that the aux uh, jack would be just you know not used but the problem is that this is a little bit bigger than the hole that's down there now so before I go through all that hassle of making that hole bigger I want to make sure that I can actually use this if not I might look for the other uh, type of USB jack that um, doesn't require a hole so big and so I can hopefully just plug it in there so again just uh, part of cleaning things up um, so other than that, uh, those are the catches and uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this uh, video. I spent about a day and a half doing all this and, and most of the time was spent in trying it out and running all those, all those silly things that you know you just don't know, uh, like the trunk being open and you get a black screen um, and trying to figure those things out. Uh, otherwise, it goes very fast. If um, you know it, it, to, to take this off, by the way, you have to first take off the mask that's around the radio. It's the uh, black trim. Uh, it's a piano black trim, and that one is kind of delicate. So I took that off a long time ago when I first did the swap with uh, one of those Android Auto Android Android uh, radios head units, which was pathetically bad. Um, and then I never put that trim back because I knew that someday I was going to do this. So that trim has been missing now for I don't know three or four years now. Um, so once that trim is off, then you have to take the air vents off and again, you just kind of very gently pry around the sides until you find an edge that pops open and you do it all the way around and then the whole thing pops forward. Uh, this one, same thing, you can just basically go down here and just start pulling it and it snaps all the way around. And then this one as well, once you lift this up, again, you basically pry around the edges, this will lift up. Then you undo these two screws and then gently grab this guy and start pulling uh, forward. You do have to put the shift in, uh, uh, let's see, in sports mode back here, shut off the engine obviously. And once the shift is all the way back here, then you can literally lift this guy, pull this back and uh, it does, there are some snaps in the back over here, but you just grab it from here, you pull it and the whole thing comes forward as I just did. So um, that's how you take this apart and um, if you want to take the armrest apart like I did, you basically take off this cover in the back here and you just pull this out. There's one nut over there, 
take that out. That allows you to take this piece out. Then there is another aluminum bracket underneath. There is a, a nut over there. And there are also two screws, actually, sorry, before you take this out, there are two screws underneath this little rubber thing over there. Take those two screws out, that bolt in the back, and this whole armrest comes off. And then there is an aluminum bracket underneath with one bolt and I believe two more uh, uh, screws uh, in the back there. So you take those three things off and then the whole aluminum bracket comes out. And now this whole piece is, is, is able to float and move around a little bit just enough for you to grab you know, cables and so on. Like I said, I ran my cables underneath this guy and underneath the seat. As you can see, the seat is back in. Nobody sits back here anyways. You can see the seat is brand new. Even if so, the pressure is right here in the center. There are the wires that it's next to. I didn't see any interference, by the way, in the video because obviously the fuel pump is right there. Uh, none of that. The video is nice and crisp, crisp and clear. So anyway, that's been my experience. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as uh, again, as a, as a show of what's possible to do with these uh, Beetles. And uh, the RCD330 definitely works in the Beetle um, with the Fender Audio. And um, so it gives you Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and the backup camera, which that is fantastic. So now that's basically as close to a modern car as you can get, even though this is a 2014. I only have 40,000 miles for 2014, so um, I, uh, you know, I wanted to modernize this a little bit, make it more useful. Anyways, it's a fun car. Uh, with this upgrade, it's going to go a lot longer. So, hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions, uh, ping me, and uh, hopefully uh, you have a good time doing yours. Uh, like I said, I don't endorse them because I mean I, I didn't I paid for all this stuff, so I'm not. This is not an endorsement video, but I did use uh, RCD330. Um, dot com. Uh, you can either order there, order it there directly, or through uh, eBay. It costs a little more through eBay. Um, they have an eBay store as well. But uh, I wanted the peace of mind that you know eBay offers versus ordering directly from them. Uh, but like I said, they've been very responsive. They even sent me emails back, uh, answer my questions over the weekend during my daytime. Um, so it seems to be viable and it seems like they sell a lot of these things. Anyways, that's been my experience. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, have fun. Bye.